Now, in my mind, I am thinking of someone, and I'm going to give you some clues as to who it is, and when you've got it, put up your hand, and we'll see if you are right. So, this person was born on the 22nd of July, 2013. He's a boy. He was born in St. Mary's Hospital. And when he was born, a very special sign was put up outside a palace. Heidi, who is it? Prince George. Excellent. It was Prince George. And obviously, two days later, he received a very special visitor. And he is someone who one day will be king. And yet, of course, this morning we are thinking about someone who is the greatest king that there has ever been and the greatest king that there will ever be. And what we're going to do is we'll look at two things that come out of this passage and then we'll sing another carol and have an open time of prayer afterwards and then we'll sing another carol and then we'll come back to this passage and we'll think about what our response should be to this baby who was born in Bethlehem. So the first thing this morning is that we meet some people who were determined to find Jesus. They were determined to find Jesus. You see that there in verses 1 and 2 in the reading. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Now what do you do when you lose your phone or your wallet or your keys or your memory stick? How do you feel? What is your response? So you go to the place where you think that you left them and you realize that they're not there and you start casually looking around the area assuming that they'll be nearby and then when you don't see them around you start packing, patting down your pockets with increasing speed and then when you don't find them in your pockets you search through all your bags and when you don't find them in your bags you get everyone else around you involved in the hunt and your mind doesn't rest until you find what you are looking for. Well, these wise men, they were determined to find Jesus. Uh, They came from the east, probably from Babylon, which was about 900 miles away from Jerusalem. In Ezra 7 and verse 9, when Ezra years earlier made the journey from Babylon to Jerusalem, uh, it took him and the people with them uh, about four months to get there. Uh, It probably would have taken these wise men a lot less time to get to Jerusalem But even so, this is a very long and substantial journey that these wise men have committed to. So it would have taken some planning. Uh, They would have had to pack supplies. Uh, The cost of the journey wouldn't have been small. Uh, They would have had to say goodbye to their family and their friends, not having any contact with them for a few months. Uh, They wouldn't have had WhatsApp or Messenger or Skype. Uh, They would have probably traveled by horseback or camel, exposed to all the different kinds of weathers that they would have gone through. Uh, They would have had to find places to stay on the way. Uh, They didn't have a sat-nav or Google Maps. Instead, they had to rely on and trust a significant special star that that had risen and had appeared. Uh, Some take the prophecy in Numbers 24, of a star coming out of Jacob and a scepter rising out of Israel as alluding to this star. And maybe they'd had access to the Old Testament scriptures. And maybe they'd read some of the writings of Daniel who had been in Babylon. And and they seemed to be aware of, of something of the special significance of this king that had been born. Because even when they didn't find him in a palace... They still wanted to search for him, and they bowed down before him. It's interesting that in the Old Testament, when you travel east, it's symbolic of going away from the Lord. 
So if you read through Genesis, you find people traveling east, and it's always symbolic of them going away from God. So Adam and Eve, they are thrown out of the Garden of Eden through the, the exit to the east. You have Cain going east. You have Lot going east. Uh, later on in the Old Testament, you have the people of Judah taken captive, and they're taken east. And it's symbolic of them going further and further away from the Lord. And yet here you find, as you look at these verses, these men, they are not going to the east. They are coming from the east. They're not going away from God. They are coming to the Lord. And you can see in verses 10 and 11 their joy when they find him. And they rejoice with exceeding joy. Uh, and I want to ask you as... Uh, this Christmas day has dawned, where are you? You're either going one of two ways. You're either going further and further away from the Lord, or you're coming nearer and nearer. And I want to ask you this morning, are you like these wise men from the east, and are you coming to the Lord? Of course, Christmas time is all about God coming to us, and that's what we so desperately need. We needed God to come to us, but we also need to come to him. And I want to ask you this morning, have you come, and are you coming to the Lord Jesus? Are you determined to find him? Or have you said sorry for all that you have done against the Lord? Have you asked him to forgive you? Are you determined to find Jesus. Uh, but the second thing we see here is that God's word is true. God's word is true. These wise men, they follow the star, and yet somehow they end up in the palace in Jerusalem. And they speak to King Herod and they say, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Now, Herod, he can't really understand this because he's the king of the Jews. What's this news that there is another king? Uh, could this king be the Christ? And so he gets together all the religious experts and he asks them where the prophets said the Christ would be born. And so they open up uh, the prophecy of Micah and they tell him Bethlehem. And of course, the remarkable thing is is that Micah lived 700 years before Jesus was born. Now, to get us thinking about how remarkable this is, we're going to go back a little bit in terms of our history. So, so here is Prince George, if you can see him there, that minuscule picture, born in 2013. Uh, can anyone tell me who that is? Maybe if you're a bit younger, you can you? Yeah. Mandela, excellent, thank you very much. And Mandela was born 95 years before Prince George. Excellent, very good. Let's put that up. Who's this? Lincoln, excellent, very good. And Lincoln was born how many years before Prince George? 204 years before Prince George was born. What event's this? It's, it's the Far of London. And when did the Far of London happen? How many years before Prince George? 347 years before Prince George was born. Okay, this is a more difficult one. Who's this? Who's this? King Henry VIII. And how many years was King Henry VIII before he was born before Prince George? You're allowed to confer, which you are already. 522 years before Prince George was born. Okay, here's, a, here's the tester. Who's that a statue of? No, afraid not. Not Richard III? It does begin with an R. Robert the Bruce. Robert the Bruce. And just about 700 years before Prince George was born in 1314, uh, he was leading uh, the, the Scottish fight for independence from the English. <laughs> Nothing changes, does it? 
But, but think about this. When the Scots were sitting around their campfires, sharpening their swords and talking to each other, and when the English were sitting around their campfires, sharpening their swords, talking to each other, no one was talking about Prince George. And no one was talking about this baby who 700 years later will be born. And no one was describing where he will be born and what he will be like and what he will come to do. And that's because as much as we love Prince George, Prince George is not significant at all. Not in the grand scheme of things. Uh, Prince George doesn't even feature really on the radar. And yet 700 years before Jesus was born and more, people were talking about Jesus. And, and God was revealing all of these details about who he would be and what he would come to do and what he would be like. And that gives us the confidence this morning to know that God's word is true. You see, it's not a fairy story. It's not a fable. It's not a legend. It's not just a result of traditions that have been uh, built on over the years and here we find ourselves with our Christmas jumpers this morning and we give presents to each other but it's not really true no it was all prophesied beforehand and it's been fulfilled and it's history that we can rely on and Jesus was a real person and is a real person and he's the son of God who has come to save his people 